Let's open her up. Say hello to your new Emac. Hello, new Emac. So, of course, you get the marker itself. So, there we go, an MG100. You get a manual. Planet Eclipse always does nice manuals, very detailed. It's nice that they're in color as well. But always good manuals with Planet Eclipse products. And this little accessory pack. Let's see what's in there. So, you get a couple barrel bags, which is nice because they give you this fat one that will actually fit over the handguard. So, if you're keeping this handguard on, you, you got a barrel bag that's going to work. And then they give you a regular one for that'll just fit over the barrel if you take a, your handguard off. They give you some Planet Clips grease, Allen key set. They do give you upgraded springs for your magazine and upgraded first strike followers. These aren't them, these are the stock ones. I've already put them in my marker, so I've already upgraded it. I've already opened this all up and actually put it over the chrono and used it in the game. So this whole delivery thing was kind of a kind of an act. But anyways, uh, what else do you get in here? You get your dummy mag so that if you want to use this uh, marker as a hopper fed marker, you'll have to put in this dummy mag. And to use it as a hopper fed marker, you'll have to put on your feed neck adapter. So this screw here, you just undo that and this whole assembly pops off and you put it on your feed neck. And this is a PAL ready feed neck. As you can see, it's got the little plunger there. This is a PAL ready marker. If you don't know what the PAL is, uh, basically it's a mechanical loader. Um, typically manacles or loaders are electronic loaders or gravity fed. Well, the PAL is mechanical. So kind of in between, almost as good as performance as electronic for almost as cheap as a gravity fed hopper. Anyways, it's ready for it if you if you want to go that route. Uh, you get this little box of parts here. And in here is some adapters and things, I believe. Yes. So adapters for the stock. So you can basically, you know, put this on the back of the marker if you want to add different stocks to it. You'll need these adapters for that. Some more adapters for that. Uh, some extra clips. These clips are already on the marker, but they give you a couple extras. What these clips are for is for the handguard. It is a two-piece, so this front half can come off, the second half stays on. To disconnect them, you basically these little retainer clips come off, and then you can slide your shroud off. So you get a couple extras of those, and then of course a bag of all your extra O-rings and screws and springs and things. So that's what you get. I think we should... Uh, Shooter. Let's do this bad boy rip. Did that just prime it? Yeah. Five shots, first strike at 70 feet. Helps you take safety out. Five shots at 75 feet. Let's go see the grouping. First, first one's way off, but the other three are pretty close. Yeah, yeah, the first one was a major drop. I was kind of wobbling the marker a bit though. So 75 feet, pretty good drop. Grouping, all four right there. And just one a little low. That was probably my fault on that one. I was kind of wobbling a bit there. Once I steadied. 
I got there. Let's go to 100 feet. So now we're gonna do uh, five more shots of backed up to 100 feet. And after we're done this, we're gonna check the grouping, but we're also gonna measure the height I'm firing from versus the height we're hitting the target. See how much drop we get in these shots. So let's go five shots, 100 feet. Steady myself good. Nice grouping, uh, about two, three inches lower than the first grouping. Let's go check it out. So here's our grouping of five right here at 100 feet. Nice tight grouping. So put some uh, GI Sports two star round ball in here, just five rounds. I'm walking a little closer because I don't expect to be able to do a 100 foot shot anywhere near target with round ball. But I'm gonna stand here at the 65 and now let's go a little farther. See if I can even hit this. So I had my barrel up. You saw a slight angle up to get that shot. I'm gonna back it up to 100 feet and see if I can make it. I don't know if I'll be able to pull this shot off, round ball. I'm not steadying, I'm just standing and shooting. Shooting pretty good. Yeah, as I get closer, you can see it's all over the map. Definitely see the difference between the round ball and the first strike because the round ball wasn't going through the cardboard, the first strike's going completely. All right, as you can see, I've uh, of course painted it. I uh, painted the MG100 because I had to. Uh, but anyways, let's uh, take it apart. Um, I'm gonna break it down and go over it. Get the tools out. Should only need your Allen keys to take this marker right down. Um, something I would like to mention is when I first got this marker, I, straight out of the box, without uh, adjusting the velocity or anything, just straight out of the box, I uh, took this out to my local field and chronoed it. I put in five rounds of first strikes and five rounds of uh, round ball. I shot the first strikes first and the average speed was about 310. I was shooting anywhere from like 309 to like 316 in those five shots, so averaging about 310. Um, now, without adjusting the velocity, I just flipped the mag to my five shots round ball, shot those five shots, and I was averaging 240. So that's quite the difference. There was a good, you know, 60 FPS, roughly, difference between round ball and first strikes. So saying that, you should probably, um, you know, if you're going to get one of these, kind of maybe dedicate it to one or the other, uh, at least for the game you're in. Um, you know, it'd be, it'd be really bad to chrono this with round ball at 280 or, or 300. Um, and then we'd switch to, you know, first strikes and be shooting like 360 or something. So you should really, you know, decide what you're shooting at or shooting with, round ball or first strike, and kind of keep it to that. Um, so anyways, to take the, the shroud as a two-piece, the handguard here. So to take the front half off, you just got these clips. And they just pop out. One on each side. So you pop those out. And then the handguard will just unclip and slide off. You'll see there's little clips for it. I'm gonna take off the mag. Uh, one thing you'll notice here, which is a nice little feature, in the back of the body here, they got some holes. Um, you know, this is for you know where you attach your stock and stuff, but they put that, which is nice, because uh, it's a nine millimeter fit for sling or swivel mounts. So if you got a nine mil one, I think it's nine mil. So this is just standard size anyways, and it'll click right in there. So that's a nice little add-on they put on there. Let's strip her down. Oh, I guess I should uh, take off my uh, my sight, my red dot there first. One thing about this marker, one of its greatest things, um, you know, it's an EMAC. So it shoots so quiet and so smoothly. It's, I'm gonna post here, I'll post a little uh, gameplay footage. Hit on your and back. You will uh, see just how quiet it is. 
and it has like zero, and I mean zero kick. Um, when I first started shooting this marker, I must admit, during the game, I checked my, um, my tank pressure a couple times. So I thought, you know, maybe I'm really low, something's going wrong because this gun is just way too quiet and way too soft. But I was still putting, you know, rounds way out there. There was nothing wrong. It's just, you know, it was so surprisingly quiet and so soft with no kick. I was convinced like I was almost out of air or something. But no, my shots were still flying across the field and nailing people. Good times. No, oh, wrong size, Allen key. Um, before I take this all apart, um, this is the access to your detents. Just take that out. Um, one thing though is bolt removal. I'm going to show you with it stripped down, but I'll show you with it now before you strip it down. It's pretty simple. It's got a little bit of a, like a, a lever or switch here. So you flick that. See that? It's, that's closed and locked. That's open. And that releases this cap in the back so that you can add stocks or what have you. But then you'll see, you can actually see the back of the bolt in there. Now, there's one in the middle. That is not where you put your Allen key. You'll notice the three around. So you gotta put like two Allen keys in there and you can get it in there if you have really skinny fingers. But anyways, you get two Allen keys and twist them and you can undo the bolt, you unscrew it and it just pops out. But I'm gonna take off the body to show you. It's a little easier that way, but you can, my point is at least you can remove the bolt without stripping it right down. So let's just take her apart and do all these little screws. So a two-piece shaft barrel system, all-American tip, or an all-American styled tip. It's not quite all-American. As you can see, the, the porting is straight rather than spiraling around. So American, all-American style. A 6.89 bored uh, barrel with it. Notice the uh, two screws there you'll have to remove. So, Magwell trigger frame off. Now to get this um, feed neck cover off, you do have to undo that, take that completely out, not just loosen it, and then kind of spread that for it to work. And you can wiggle it off with great difficulty. There we go. So yeah, you can't just pull this right off. You have to kind of spread that. Now this should come apart. There we go. So there, essentially, is an EMAC. Um, you will have to take this part now and then, like so, because you will have to grease right there. But as you can see, there essentially is your MagFed EMAC. Now, so the bolt, now that you can see it a little easier, what I meant is you can't put an Allen key in there. That'll If you undo that, this whole thing will fall apart and you won't get the actual bolt out. So what I was saying is you notice how they have these three Allen key holes. So you can stick an Allen key in there. I find it easier when, and I'm talking when the body's on, because you know, it sits about there. So you need Allen keys. You can see how deep you'd have to go. So I find it easier if you have two Allen keys in there, right? Because then you can twist, right? That's when the body's on. When the body's off, you can just do it by hand. So you just unscrew that. It's not tight at all. It comes out quite easy. And there's your bolt. And they put a lot of grease on this. Wow. But anyways, there we go. And of course, you know, 
plastic clips, bolts, that can comes off. You can unscrew this to get inside. And lube everything up, keep her clean, keep her pretty. Put her back in, obviously just push it in and tighten her up. There. There she is, all stripped down. So let's put it back together. Uh, one thing I have learned, um, do not put these two pieces together first. You have to put this together. Um, basically you have to have the body on this part before this because on here you'll notice this little tab and these rails, that's got to tuck in to this. So it's got to be on the inside like that. That little tab's got to be inside this. So you have to put that aside. You have to build this portion first. Get this back together. And then go put it on the uh, trigger frame. Now that we have this apart, I just wanted to show you something actually while we got this apart. Is this is why this marker is so good. It's an EMAC. EMACs are fantastic. Why? Because of the Gamma Core. Beautiful bolt system. But look at this. Let me see if we can line that up just right. Look how you can see down the breech. Let's look at it from the bottom. For strike shape, slightly oversized so you don't have to worry about nipples or for strikes that are longer than usual, Planet Eclipse thought of that. But you'll notice this little metal tab. This is why it feeds so well. Because, basically, when you feed your mag in, that metal tab goes right in there. So, let's just, uh, it's obviously not going to open with me because I don't have the mag well to open it. But, basically, it sits inside the marker like that. So, you see that metal tab is in there. So, you can't really have feeding issues because the back of your first strike is like riding that up into the breech to be perfectly lined. And you'll notice something as I angle it. Hey, there's the bolt face, the front of the bolt. Look how flush it is. Look at that bottom, that metal tab that guides your first strikes. See how the bolts flush or just slightly behind that? So you're not going to really ever have a feeding problem with this. And it's going to be nice and air efficient. Planet Eclipse, yo. Did I mention this is a freaking EMAC that shoots FSRs? Anyways, let's get it back together. So you can see things just line up. Boom. It's kind of foolproof. Everything lines up in there. Looks good. Looks good. Get the screws back in. And you do not have to mix, worry about mixing up your screws at all the same length for the, the little screws or bolts that go into the body. They're all the same length. Oops. go so now that's all back together oh except for this now that I can show you so then we just got to put our cap back in and locks into place unlocked locked then we can put the trigger frame back on and this you got to put that little tab locks into there Kind of foolproof. One screw there. One screw there. 
So, anyways, when I was playing with this on a, a couple Sundays ago in a Magpie game, I almost, uh, almost felt like I was cheating. There wasn't many first strike shooters there. There was a few of us, but this thing was just outranging everybody. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that. You know, the other guys were getting the same range as me, but I was just accurate or more consistent. I mean, you could say human error, maybe I was a better aimer than the other guys are, are not, but my shots just to seem to be way more consistent. Like, my grouping smaller. Um, there's a couple times when, you know, and I'm with a guy, one guy in particular, we were both shooting at this target, and I was on target, and he was off by like two, three feet. And it's not because it was bad aim, it's just, it was the marker. Um, and that was a T15 versus this. I don't know what barrel he was using, but, and I mean, this is, I was stock barrel. Um, you may have heard the rumors online. I don't know if it's rumors or true, but there's been rumors of guys putting these MG100 stock up against SAR-12s with NEMI barrels and stuff and placing the same shots, like shooting just as well, if not better. But hey, that's what you get with a Planet Eclipse marker. So I'm just going to put the uh, feed neck blocker back in. See how that just kind of locks in. Put that in just to secure it. There we go. Like I said, two-piece barrel. I like uh, I like rocking this uh, marker with just half the shroud on. I don't really like having the full length handguard or shroud on. But one thing I think looks really good, let me just put this barrel back in, is having just the barrel back in. Makes it a bit louder, a little intimidating. I personally like the real quiet shots, but this makes it a little snappier and louder. But I mean, how good does that look as a CQB model right there? I think that looks really sexy. It'd be nice to have a little tip on there or something, but still, I think that looks great. Having the front barrel, the front half of the barrel doesn't really improve accuracy, it just quiets it down quite a bit. Uh, might help with air efficiency as well, I'm not too sure about that. Then, oh, I turned my uh, shot truck camera on by mistake. There we go. And then the front half of the handguard, you see it just clicks in. You could just leave it like that, I'm sure it'd be secure enough, but they do give you these clips just to lock it in, one on each side. So there we go, I'll put back together Planet Eclipse MG100. It's dope. Great, I love this. Um, the on off, the pops on off ASA, really nice. To activate it so when your tank's on there, to charge it up, air it up, just push it back. To decharge it or de air it, you push in that little round button and pull forward. Really simple. Simple mechanism for your on-off. Oh, one other thing I should show you. Now this is toolless design, but I don't have nails, so I need tools. But if you got fingernails, you could do this without tools. But one thing I like about this, another thing I like about this, is to take off the pistol grip. Because you know, you get paint in there and all the little grooves and it's pain. You can take this all off, so you can just run it under your tap, hit it with a brush, what have you. But there's this little tap thing here. You can put your nails, if you have nails, in there and pull it off, but I'm a nail biter. So that comes out like that. It doesn't completely come out, just pops out that far. Then you can kind of, oops, make sure it stays popped out. Once again, you need nails. I don't have nails. That pops up. See, quite easy. On each side, pops up. Boom. Take that, wash it, get all the paint out. Front half just peels off, open like that. Boom. So if you have to do repairs in there too as well, easy to get to. But I like that it's just simple for cleaning. Like easily this can come off. I mean, it goes back on just as easy. Just snaps into place. Just gotta make sure you do it right. And get the little tabs underneath. That's all good on that side. Make sure on this side, see the little tab there? It's just gotta be underneath. Boom, all good. And the back half, you kinda have to lever it in like this, just to make sure that tab gets in the right spot. forward that locks together check the other side make sure it's locked together it's locked together 
hopefully everything looks good, and everything looks good, push that in, locks it all up. There we go. Anyways, I mean, there's lots of like, more I can tell you about this marker. I'm sure I could go on and on and on, but let's face it, it's a freaking EMEC that shoots FSRs. I don't even care that it's mag-fed. It, it, you know, it's cool that it's mag-fed. It just so happens that's the only way to feed first strikes is through a magazine. I don't even care this is mag-fed, like I say. I like this. I wanted this because it's a Planet Eclipse EMEC built for shooting first strike rounds. Simple as that. Just happens to use one of the best uh, mag feeding systems out there, combined with one of the best mechanical markers out there, the EMEC. I personally think it's super ugly, but I don't care. It's an EMEC that shoots for strikes. And that's all I gotta say about that. So remember, everyone, can you uh, please do me a favor? If you enjoyed this video, please do me a favor. And you think I'm gonna say subscribe and hit that like button, do that. But the favor I wanna ask you is to play fair, play, play hard, and have fun. Pepper paintball, y'all.